This video was sponsored by Creality. Today we're checking out the Creality Falcon 2 laser cutter. Uh, we're doing some sketchy stuff with it because this machine is perfect for doing sketchy stuff with it. This video is sponsored by Creality. We're building a desk. So it's a really funny thing, like when you send somebody some a kind of product like me, I'm very goal oriented. So you kind of run the risk of me using that product to achieve some sort of goal that I had at that moment in time. And over the past couple of weeks, I've had some like organizational issues. Having a machine like this, you can basically do DIY projects with wood completely silent. It, well, there is some noise because of the air assist module and that kind of stuff, but uh, that's really quite cool. So they sent it over with this enclosure that you see over here. It's basically like a tent. This just prevents stray laser beams from, for example, hitting your skin and causing some skin burns. And also, I recommend wearing eye protection even with the enclosure around it, but it is really handy for getting rid of the fumes as well. We also kind of wanted to combine the things that I already own, so I own the Creality K1C and the uh, scanner, the CS Scan Ra Raptor. So I thought it would be fun to do kind of a combo like project, try and build a desk with this laser cutter, maybe incorporate some 3D printed parts, but also scan the components that we need to integrate into this thing. And the concept behind it is basically I need this desk that maybe is very repeatable to, to build. So saving all of the files and then when we need another one of these desks, we can just put it under the laser cutter and have it do its thing and it's ready to be assembled essentially. But basically there's a bunch of mirrors I believe in here and a bunch of lenses and then it just, you know, focuses the light down this nozzle over here. And it's kind of like that scene in Star Wars with the, with the Death Star, kind of exactly like that but in a smaller version. But yeah, I still had these really cheap sit stand eggs in my storage compartment downstairs. But I really would like them to like be flush mounted into the desktop itself. Just like all of the other desks here, right? And this is kind of a painstaking process. I wish that I think there might actually be a setting so that it automatically levels it as well, but I haven't really had time to figure it out. But I basically manually have to align it to the grid. There we have it. But then yeah, all of these measurements are accurate, right? So we can basically start building a casing around it and make sure that the holes line up with the actual mounting points of these legs. So I just want to give a special thanks to the Patreons that have subscribed to my Patreon over the past couple of days. I really appreciate your support. It really helps out with the projects that we're doing here. I upload pretty much all of the stuff I make on there. So the SVG files, the Shaper 3D files, the step files, and if you ever want anything else, then just leave a comment on there. I'll, um, I'll upload it over there. Alright, so the design is somewhat finished. I went for not randovers, but just chamfers essentially on everything. I think that looks pretty cool. It's like a futuristic vibe, but then it, with wood. So there are definitely some design aspects of this machine that I don't really like, like the fact that you have plugs on both sides. So it's very difficult to make it look good as well, like because everything is, all the wires are sticking out from all the sides. So this first cut went extremely well. So this is five millimeter thick multiplex. And what I noticed is that it's extremely fast. I thought it was engraving for just a moment there, but it's actually cutting through the wood. And this is not like sped up or anything. This is the actual speed that the machine is going, which is quite impressive. Like if you try to do that with a jigsaw, for example, that's not possible. You, <laughs> you, or maybe it's possible. Maybe you're extremely fast with a jigsaw. I don't know, but I wouldn't be able to go that fast with a jigsaw, to be honest. Uh, if you try to make a 3D print that holds these uh, sit-stand legs, you're probably busy for at least like four hours, or the printer is at least printing for four hours. This was, I think it was six minutes to carve this all out, and the design process doesn't take a whole lot longer. So I think most people see these machines as kind of a hobby, like doing a hobby, but I actually see them as a cost-saving measure as well. The desk setup that we're building here right now is built in a way that's very quick and very uh, cheap but still upgradable with the stuff that I like to do, right? So I could go to Ikea and buy myself a desk which is made out of cardboard but I'd rather build it out of actual wood and have it last a long time and be cheap. You know, that's what this machine allows us to do as well. So a great example of this is the power plug. So I actually want the power plugs to be inbuilt. You could definitely go on Amazon and buy some inbuilt power plugs over there but the thing is they're like very expensive for what they are, like 30 euros per power plug. And what I did is I went to the action here in the Netherlands. I bought some which are like three euros. I 
bought some multiplex for 11 euros, but only using like a piece of that there. Eh? 3D scanned the power plugs, took that to Shaper 3D. Still had a design laying around from a different thing that I built a little while ago, but I basically adjusted that a little bit so that it would fit this power plug and yeah, we could take that to the laser cutter, basically saving us like 25 euros there. But I was also really curious if we could use it to actually produce the desk itself, like the gaps in the desk. And that's a little bit more difficult because the wood is a lot more thick as well. So it's like 12 millimeters thick and we need to like align it somehow. So I drew, drew up a design in Shape of 3D, exported that as an SVG. And I like marked out a cross on the wood itself as well by measuring out where I wanted it to be. And then I aligned the entire laser cutter with that by hand. So I did engrave it once before see if it was correct and then adjusted that a little bit more and I started the process of like cutting it. So the issue that we ran into over there which caused that little mini explosion is because the sides of this honeycomb grid used to come with little caps like this that lift it a little bit off the ground essentially and it allows like airflow to pass through underneath right. I didn't have these on there because I lost them when I unpacked I like unboxed the uh, whole device. But I must say they're not really stuck on here too well either, so... I think there might have been some glue over there, but it ripped off really quickly. But after that I made sure to lift the entire multiplex sheet a little bit above the honeycomb grid. And I was really shocked by this because I had set it up to do two passes, but it seemed like it was almost cutting through it with a single pass. Like 300mm per minute, 100% power, really impressive. I had no idea that it was going to be able to do that so cleanly and so quickly as well. So most of the pieces just fell out when you hit them. Uh, there was one that was, yeah, the laser didn't go completely through. That could be due to some imperfections in the wood, you know, resulting in some blower power in that regard. Maybe I should have adjusted the settings a little bit, but I took a knife to that and it came off quite nicely. This is way better than I'm able to achieve with a jigsaw. So I did the exact same process on the other side and this was really speedy. Like now I knew what to do. It was pretty quick, you know, just put the laser cutter on there line it up to the thing, do a test engrave, and I was ready to go in like, I don't know, five minutes, maybe seven minutes, uh, which sounds like a really long time, it is a long time. But considering that it does such a complex thing, I think it's faster than doing it by hand, and it's less effort than doing it by hand as well. So after seeing how well that went, I was really curious to see if it could cut through a thicker beam of wood as well. It does come with some visor feet, which you can use to prop up the device a little bit higher, and it allows you to cut different kinds of materials and make it a little bit yeah, more versatile, so to say. What I really like about this design is you can do some really sketchy stuff with that, and perhaps like mount it on light stands or something, or like make a custom mount for it and put it on some sliding things. So I put a beam of wood underneath there and I wasn't expecting this to actually work. I was expecting it to still, like, set fire to it. I'm still using the same settings here. So 300 millimeters per minute at 100% power. Uh, that first pass went about 10 millimeters deep. Uh, second pass, you know, 20 millimeters deep. And this was really the point where I was like, is this actually gonna work? And I did a couple more passes, but it seems like it's gonna defocus when it gets closer to the to the end, when it gets further away, the laser yeah has less power to do it. Eventually, I got a little impatient and I just grabbed that beam to see what's going on and I snapped it in half. And it seems like there were like certain threads of wood that it wasn't cutting through. Not entirely sure why that was, but perhaps the wood was a little bit wet in those areas or something like that. If you know what happened, then let me know in the comments. I'm pretty sure though, if we gave it a couple more passes, it would have gone clean through this thing. So. That's pretty impressive, like I uh, I wasn't expecting this to be possible. But yeah, I did the rest of the wooden beams with the circular saw, which is a lot more easy to do as well, because you can actually mark out where you want it, and then you have the tactile feedback of your hand, you can move it to where you want it. So I glued everything together and let it sit overnight. After that, I did go past it with a sanding machine to make it flush with the rest of the build. This is also something the laser cutter can't yet do. But it would be really cool to see like some kind of really high powered laser which could cut through this thick of a material and just clean up the sides as well. I like the look of 3D printed components with wooden components more I think than what it looks like now with the wooden components and just you know on the, on the wood because it's a bit too uniform. 
but in terms of strength, it's pretty nice. It does creak a little bit when you stand on top of it because it's not glued together or anything. But yeah, it's pretty sick that we just made a desk with a laser essentially. And I'm really curious to see what we can do with this machine in the future. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.